This is Mario with MIA Microflight once again, and this is the MIA 1.0. It's the uh, 2019 version, but uh, we're still flying this uh, same model. Uh, there hasn't been uh, changes to it. It's the same auto gyro as I show in many of the videos that are on my channel in uh, YouTube or on YouTube. This particular gyro uses a trademark uh, head. This is the MIA trademark control head. You can see the, all the mechanics are hidden away. You cannot see any of the uh, uh, pivoting um, mechanism, which is uh, basically a yoke or universal joint that's been designed as part of that head design that you see here. And you can see how the model is just spinning by itself. The rotor had just a very slight breeze today. You can see the trees are not moving very much, but there's a very slight breeze. So that's an indication of how well this rotor head is uh, built. This rotor, rotor head is, uh, is a dual plate, uh, dual bearing with blade saber extenders that you see here. And that allows, the extenders allow the rotor to spin uh, easier in very light breeze conditions, like today. But you can also fly it without the extenders or blade savers and just mount the blades directly to the flex plates on a more breezier day or windy conditions. The airframe on this uh, particular one, uh, since uh, I switched from wood, I used to make them in wood and the three print parts that you see here, all the parts in color used to be fiberglass plates just uh, to sandwich the frames and so ever since uh, 3D printing came, came about and it was uh, stable enough that we can produce some decent parts. Uh, we uh, started making them in 3D printed form because that allows for a little more geometry uh, and more uh, of an aesthetic but also mechanical um, function. As you can see here, the frame is uh, well encapsulated into those 3D printed parts. The well engineered product is. Uh, uh, many people have already said about this uh, auto gyro. In fact, there's one guy in the UK who has been following my work for many, many years, but he's uh, not a very nice person. Uh, but he went on to say that, uh, yeah, the auto gyro is uh, probably over engineered and it should fly well, but it doesn't. Well, go look at every single one of my videos that shows this very same model flying the, from the wood to the aluminum frames. Same thing because I have not changed the uh, specification on this particular size. Everything is pretty much the same. I have switched over from uh, 3D tanning or fiberglass parts to uh, 3D printed parts, as I was explaining, or to uh, assemble a frame and to do some of these uh, spiffy components that you see for the rotor, as well as the uh, stabilizer support uh, parts. And some little details like my name, uh, logo, that's done also. It's a 3D printed part, so you can see it on the canopy right there, and even the wheels. And so pretty much the whole thing is uh, it's been kept, uh, it's been designed in-house and kept inside uh, or in-house to control the pro the end product. And that's what you're getting here, and that's what you're seeing once the model is assembled and decorated with uh, some optional uh, items like the decals are optional. You know, you don't have to put the decals on. Uh, in fact, I don't supply decals uh, for uh, for a while. I have not been supplying decals because many people were buying my auto gyro and not putting the decals on. So I figured, you know, it's a waste of materials, a waste of time, and um, and, and really um, an added expense, you know, uh, in the overall cost of the, the product. So I decided not to include the decals and then uh, supply all the white parts that you see here. All these white parts are polyethylene, which is a very strong material. If you, uh, if you know the consistency of milk jugs, you know, milk jugs and uh, water bottles and things that, that need to hold things uh, firmly and securely without cracking or breaking are made from uh, these types of plastics, polyethylene. In fact, for milk jugs, it's a, it's a very durable uh, material as a raw material, but it's been re... Um, um, it, it, you know, that type of material has been used in some of these uh, parts that I use here from uh, the industry, you know, they came out with these uh, corrugated uh, polyethylene uh, plastic sheets, and so that's what I employ in all these models. In fact, I employ that in all my models because I got tired of molding 
vacuum forming these parts and uh, later on you know, one good crash, one good uh, hit and the parts would crack and I would have to replace them. So this eliminated that uh, issue you know, with uh, vacuum forming and even some um, injection molded parts that uh, are made from uh, ABS or similar lightweight uh, thin uh, plastics. So polyethylene is very durable. You will probably bend this. Uh, it'll bend, but it will. You will not break this. So it's very, very durable material, and I use and very lightweight. And so that's the reason why I use these for the seat, for the canopy, for vertical and horizontal stabilizers. Uh, another detail that should be mentioned here is uh, there's a there's a customer who bought this, and uh, apparently he was giving me uh, all his thoughts, what he thought the model should have without understanding, I mean, uh, if he's a seasoned uh, RC pilot, as he said he was, uh, he should know that any, t any model that has a propeller at the rear, those are, those, those are called pushers, they, uh, they don't need, a, a, um, I should say, they, it's not that they don't need, uh, a pusher a prop model with the rotor head that it employs the pitching, the up and down, does not require an elevator because the head is doing the up and down movement of the uh, model, establishing up elevator, down elevator through the head. This particular head uses a dual mix and it's done via the radio, you know, it's an elevon mix, in other words. So you're able to pitch the blades with the elevon mix left and right, forward, up and down. So your elevator and aileron is employed into the head. So therefore, you do not need an up elevator uh, installed on the horizontal stabilizer. However, this model does have a rudder employed for more coordinated turns with that type of control. So this is not a uh, Auto G. An Auto G, uh, it was a tractor type with a motor at the front and thus fix our pitch uh, rotor head. So therefore, it needed a an elevator you know, to control the up and down. This is not that type of aircraft. Um, and any seasoned RC a modeler that understands a uh, pusher from uh, tractor type designs, universal heads, should know that already. So basically this is the same uh, design. This one is 2019, we haven't changed uh, Anything on this uh, since that time, we're still flying this uh, little auto gyro. Uh, the blade extenders, like I said, they do allow for the blades to have a larger rotor diameter, which allows also for the, the rotor head to spin a lot easier in uh, very calm uh, wind conditions. Uh, you have to keep those things in mind. I mean, there's a purpose for these things. They're not just uh, for aesthetic uh, purposes or just to make the blades longer. They're there for the purposes that I'm explaining in this video. This one does not have the propeller installed. Um, I was flying this and I was changing uh, some things and I was kind of cleaning it up because I have had this model uh, um, for quite some time now. So it's the same model that I show in the many of the videos uh, that I did back in 2019, 2018, um, uh, 2020 I think uh, even. Uh, with the pandemic we weren't able to get as much uh, flying done but uh, we're back on track and this is the reason why I decided to take this out and just to showcase all these things that, uh, uh, that some people just don't understand and this has to be put on the videos for them to look at it and, uh, and have a little more uh, more information and, and, and consideration you know because uh, they just uh, I don't think those people that uh, or at least this particular customer that bought this one I don't think he understands that um, so this is uh, that type of uh, autogyro it's a 1.0 size which is um, in the hierarchy of the, the way I designed all these things. You know, I started with 1.0 and up to uh, 3.0. I uh, have the same concept uh, in terms of size uh, hierarchy, you know, with the micro lights, uh, helicopters, and uh, many of the other products, you know, radio control uh, buggies. I've done uh, go karts, I've done uh, land yachts, I've done helicopters, uh, ultra lights, micro lights, I mean, pretty much anything that uh, is radio control. You know, I pretty much have done that over the years, but I tend to concentrate on things that uh, that, that are uh, of a aeronautical nature, things that uh, fly. And so, if you're wondering also how this flies, you can look at the, I mean, I must have over a hundred videos in my YouTube channel that I've done over the years 
and every single one of these sorts of model in action is it should fly and it does so once again this is mario with my micro flight this is my design 1.0 done from the bottom up based on the igor benson design this is a pusher based on that design but like i said it's got my own custom and trademark parts that you see here you will not see these parts on anything or any similar auto gyro unless they're copying my parts and this i've said that this over the years since the time i designed this part i came up with this particular head design which is very clean and like i said very elegant the whole kit whole model is very elegant and there's no rc or auto gyro that will look like this assembles like this or performs as in my videos if you can't fly it if you're not setting it up correctly or you're doing something wrong I have a full set of instructions that I supply with these kits if you're not following the instructions as a, and they're not hard to follow they're basically basic uh, settings that you have to set your radio um, and because this particular size is uh, smaller you know it uh, it does fly with those considerations as you would in any aircraft uh, model airplanes need to have that uh, same consideration because when you go smaller you know the controls become a little more sensitive and so you have to make adjustments for that and not only on the transmitter the settings mechanical setup but also on your hand to eye coordination it's just common sense logic that happens with every single model when you are working with smaller versions this is not that small but you know it um, you have to consider that and you have to make adjustments for that but 